Meet Billy. He's pretty happy right now because his parents just got him Forza Horizon 5 and his game download's just about to finish. He's been waiting all day. Look how excited he is. Billy has an R9 380 GPU with 2GB of VRAM and his Windows 10 PC has 8GB of system RAM. Billy needs you to remember this terminology. VRAM is the dedicated RAM that's on your GPU card and system RAM is the RAM that goes into your motherboard. Billy plays Minecraft on his PC all the time, so he's sure it'll run the latest AAA titles without issues. He starts Horizon 5 and gets this message. This message is telling you that your video driver is either out of date or that the video card you're using is not supported by this game. If you get the latest video driver for your card and you still get this message, then it's most likely an unsupported card, which is the answer in Billy's case. However, you can click the ignore and continue button and see if the game runs, but you'll be running the game with an unsupported video card using an unsupported video driver and therefore you might run into graphical issues or the game might not work at all. And you won't contact the developers or go online and rant about bugs in the game because you know you're running hardware that's not supported. Billy chooses ignore and continue and the game auto configures his graphics settings for him and sets them to 1080p with low graphics preset and he starts playing. Then this pops up on screen. Billy chooses to ignore this important message from the developers and keeps playing. 10 seconds later, this pops up. Not happy Billy. Well. This is where the fun starts, and when I say fun, I mean fun as in going to the dentist fun. Let's look at the developer's minimum PC specifications for this game. We see that the game requires 4GB of VRAM and 8GB of system RAM as a minimum. What we're about to go through still applies to cards with more than 2GB of VRAM, as you can fill up the VRAM fairly easily with this game. It's just easy to show it on a card with 2GB of VRAM. Let's jump back to that first error message in the middle of the screen. What do the numbers in this message mean? Those figures don't seem to match our 2GB of VRAM that we have. The number on the right is the amount of VRAM that Windows has allocated for the game to use. You have 2GB of VRAM on your GPU, but Windows is using 300 megabytes of that for other things like Windows desktop visual elements, etc. So the game only has access to use 1.7 gigabytes of your VRAM. What this message is telling you is that the game is using 2.3 gigabytes of graphical data in memory when you only have 1.7 gigabytes of VRAM available. Hold up, how does that work? How can the game be using more VRAM than we even have physical VRAM? Windows GPU shared memory says hi. If you press Ctrl Alt Delete on your computer when Horizon 5 is running and select Task Manager from the list, select the Performance tab at the top and choose your GPU on the left menu. You can see the section titled Dedicated GPU Memory Usage. This is our physical VRAM on the GPU and it shows 2GB because that's the amount of VRAM this GPU has. You can see we're basically using all of it. Below that, the next graph is Shared GPU Memory Usage. What's that? It's a portion of your system RAM that Windows 10 has marked that's allowed to be shared by either the system system for general use or it can be used by the GPU to store graphical data in the event that the GPU runs out of VRAM, which is exactly what's happened here on screen. You can see in this example that we're using 1.7 gigabytes of 4 gigabytes allocated as shared GPU memory. I can't comment on the speed differences here or if using shared GPU memory is going to cause graphical issues in the game. From the very limited testing I did, it didn't seem to cause any issues, but that's probably a testing video for another day. The upside to shared GPU memory is that the game doesn't crash or start to show corrupted graphics when you run out of VRAM. It just keeps running. The downside, if you don't have enough system RAM, it can slow things down significantly. You can see here that Windows is reporting that we have 6 gigabytes of GPU memory, which is 2 gigabytes of VRAM and 4 gigabytes of shared system RAM. We're using a total of 3.6 gigabytes of 6 gigabytes total available. Even though the GPU only has 2 gigabytes of VRAM, the game is still running fine because it's utilizing the shared system RAM. It's a little confusing because looking at Afterburner in the top left corner, it's only reporting on the physical VRAM. It's not showing the shared portion that we're using. This is just a Windows centric capability. But as you can see from the task manager, we're storing 3.6 gigabytes of video data. So to recap this first part, to be sure you're following along, we have 2 gigabytes of VRAM on our GPU, we have 8 gigabytes of system RAM, of which 4 gigabytes is dedicated to system general usage, and 4 gigabytes is shared for system general usage or for the GPU to store video data in. Great. We can keep playing our game even when we don't have enough VRAM on our GPU to store all the video data we need. But what happens if our VRAM is full and we need to store video data into our shared memory portion of the system RAM, but then the whole 8 gigabytes of system RAM is also full? First of all, Billy needs to go and cry to his parents to see if they'll buy him 16 gigabytes of system RAM and make his problem go away. But if his parents see through this act and tell him to go and get a job if he wants an upgrade, even though he's only 11 years old, here's what can happen next when the VRAM and the system RAM is full. 
Windows 10 has a feature called System RAM Compression. Windows will compress data in the system RAM to try and save space. This feature doesn't necessarily kick in here when you start to fill up your system RAM and it can be a bit random at times. This feature will save minimal space in your system RAM, especially if you're almost at capacity, and it also requires CPU time to compress and decompress the data as needed. It's a very minimal thing and it won't get you very far if you're running low on system RAM. I just wanted to mention it because it is part of the overall picture of what Windows does to try and make the system system RAM you have go further. You can see on screen now in the task manager on the performance tab, if you click on memory and hover over the memory composition chart, a window will pop up and show how much memory is being compressed and what the saving is. In this example you can see that 101 megabytes is compressed and the data is approximately 259 megabytes in size when uncompressed, so not very much of a saving. Take a look at this screenshot from another system that has 32 gigabytes of system RAM. Only 12.3 gigabytes of RAM is in use, but there's 849 megabytes of system memory compressed, holding approximately 2.6 gigabytes of data. This is where I say it can be a bit random because we still have 19.5 gigabytes of system RAM available, so why compress the data in there? Moving on, so we've filled up our VRAM, we've filled up our system RAM, we've compressed as much memory as we can. Surely the game catches fire and crashes, right? Nope, now we get to the Windows paging file, or swap file as it's also known. When you run out of system RAM, Windows has a file on your disk drive, which is hopefully an SSD, where it stores data that it can't fit into memory. It's called the page file. Basically, if you have data that needs to go into system RAM, but it doesn't fit, Windows will start to put things into the page file, which is a lot slower than storing things into system RAM, but it allows your computer to keep running when you're out of system RAM. If you have a really fast SSD, then it's going to be less of a performance hit when this kicks in. But if you don't, then this process is really capable of grinding your computer to a halt. Windows itself is fairly good at managing what data it should be putting into the page file and what data it should be keeping in system RAM, but this is a fairly complex topic to cover, so I won't go into it any deeper. I'll leave a link in the video description, which is an extremely educational video on the subject for anyone that wants to watch it. I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of you don't want to watch it, but just in case you do, the link's there. Just know that when you run out of system RAM, Windows starts storing data in a file on your disk drive, which is not ideal, but it does let your computer keep running. So to recap the process, we have our GPU VRAM that we use to store video data first. Then when that fills up, we start sharing the portion of the system RAM that Windows has marked as shared GPU memory. Then when we run out of system RAM, Windows uses system memory compression to try and fit more into the system RAM, which is a bit random in the way it does this because Windows will use this before it fills the system RAM, then when we can't compress any more data in system RAM, Windows will start dumping data into the page file, which is the slowest thing it can do, but if you have a fast SSD, it's less of a performance hit. If you don't have an SSD, this process can really grind your computer to a halt, especially if you have an older spindle disk. So the real takeaway from all my rambling so far is that you really want at least 16 gigabytes of RAM to play this game. This will also let you push your graphical capabilities past the amount of VRAM you have on your GPU and you might get away with it and be able to play the game fine. I haven't done any testing on the performance issues that using shared system RAM to store graphical data might have. I may do this in the future. Let's watch all this in real time. Back to Billy's computer. With 8 gigabytes of system RAM and an R9 380 GPU with 2 gigabytes of VRAM. You can see on screen now that the GPU is idle and we're using 0.1 of 2 gigabytes of VRAM and 0 of 4 gigabytes of shared GPU memory. System RAM use is 1.5 of 8 gigabytes and there's 6.4 gigabytes available. Now let's start Horizon 5. We get our unsupported video card and driver message and click ignore and continue. Now we can see that our GPU memory is starting to get used and we're also using 0.6 gigabytes of shared GPU memory at this stage. Even though the VRAM is still not full, I guess Windows decided that some video data doesn't need to be in the dedicated VRAM. We can also see that our system RAM usage has gone up. We're now at 3.8 of 8 gigabytes in use. The resolution is 1080p and the graphics profile we're using is low. Now let's start the game and watch what happens. Watch the dedicated VRAM and the shared memory usage charts. Watch them fill up as the game loads.
There we go, we've filled our two gigabytes of VRAM and we've started filling our shared GPU memory as well. If we look at the memory tab, we can also see that we've filled up our system RAM. You can see the drop in system RAM usage from the peak. Windows at this point will have moved some of that data to the page file to free up some working space in the system RAM. I have to minimize the task manager here to be able to play the game, so let's play the game a little and see what happens. Okay, so we get the low VRAM warning straight away. But we start driving and we seem to be getting 60 FPS. A little micro stutter there, but we've got a fairly solid 60 FPS here at 1080p with the low graphics preset calculated. Okay, now we get the low system RAM message and click OK. Let's alt tab out to task manager and see what's going on. So we can see the VRAM's full. We're also using 1.5 of four gigabytes of shared GPU memory. Now, if we look at system RAM, we're using seven gigabytes with 47 megabytes compressed, holding 126 megabytes of uncompressed data. So the game knows we're running low on system RAM, even though it looks like we have around one gigabyte left. I can guarantee you that we're using the page file at this point to store things. Watch the video about page file in the description if you wanna learn how to monitor your page file usage. Let's keep driving, watch the FPS. We're still getting a fairly solid 60 FPS. This is a R9 380, two gigabyte GPU from 2015. It's pretty impressive that this card can run the game like this. Let's give it a run through the town. This is a good section to test your video card as there's a lot of buildings to be drawn and lots of textures to be loaded. Let's see if we can bring the card down to an unplayable level. Okay, so we're getting some frame rate drop here, down to 50, quick dip under 50, but for the most part, we're staying above 50 in the city, which is not too bad. I wouldn't say it's unplayable, not ideal, but still playable. So there you go. If you've watched this entire video, I hope you found it at least a little bit interesting and maybe gained some new knowledge about this stuff. Let's just do one more thing here for science. Let's see what happens when we try and max our graphics settings and see if we can get the game to crash on this card. Let's push it as far as we can with eight gigabytes of system RAM and a two gigabyte VRAM card. So we're running at 1080p, V-Sync's on, and 60 FPS, using the extreme graphics profile. Watch the VRAM and shared GPU memory usage. I think we're gonna need more than we have total here. System RAM is full. I think we've crashed. Nope, still going. Ah, there we go, game's crashed. Now let's try this exact same test with 16 gigabytes of system RAM installed instead of eight. Notice we now have eight gigabytes of shared GPU memory. The amount of memory that gets shared is half of the total installed system RAM. So same test, 1080p, 60 FPS, V-Sync on, and extreme graphics profile preset. Let's see if we can replicate the crash we just had with eight gigabytes of system RAM. Or if the game loads this time as it has more system RAM and as a result, more shared GPU memory. Okay, so we can see that the VRAM's full and we're now up to five gigabytes of shared GP memory usage as well. We're using 13 to 14 gigabytes of system RAM too. So the game runs. It's a slideshow, but it runs. Oh, nice. I get to show you another bug in the game at the moment. A gift. Awesome. Let's go get it. We slideshow over to the barn with our two gigabyte video card.
But where's our gift? That's the bug. You can't get the gift. You can only give a gift, which I'm assuming the other players don't receive either. So let's look at Task Manager for some final numbers here. You can see we're using our 2GB of dedicated VRAM and we're storing an additional 6GB of video data in the shared GPU memory. So around 8GB of video data total using a 2GB VRAM card. The game runs potato, but that's because this card doesn't have the power to run the game at such a high graphics setting. Not because of the limited VRAM though. You can also see we're using 14.4GB of our 16GB system RAM. Even when you don't set your graphics options higher than the card can store in the VRAM, this game still uses more than 8GB of system RAM. So the real summary here is, if you want to play Forza Horizon 5, you really should have 16 gigabytes of system RAM for the best experience. This was a long and ranting video, but the main reason I made it is this. I'm going to be making a lot of videos in the future to do with VRAM and system RAM usage in games, and I really don't want to have to add any of the info in this video into my future videos. I want the future videos to be as condensed and to the point as possible. So instead of having to explain the stuff in this video again, I'll just reference this video and note that if there's anything people don't understand, they can watch this video to get more of an understanding of what I'm talking about. And if you're wondering what happened to Billy, he got himself a job on Fiverr doing data entry work and he finally upgraded to 16GB of system RAM. Thumbs up Billy. That's all for now. I hope you didn't fall asleep on this one. The next video will be far less dreary. See you all next time.